It was spring of 2017, and the fighting in Afghanistan was brutal and incessant. Over 40 nations, along with global institutions like NATO and the Arab League, had joined forces to fight the threat of ISIS. Now, they had successfully cornered the terrorist faction with little room to hide. In response, the enemy's attacks in the Middle East and in Western nations were escalating in a desperate attempt to prove that they would not be defeated. But as their numbers dwindled and they lost more territory, the remaining ISIS fighters secluded themselves deep within the cave systems of the Nangahar region bordering Pakistan. It was now significantly more challenging for the US-led coalition to reach the last remaining ISIS forces, and thus the US military decided to send a powerful message. On April 13th, 2017, the US unleashed the most potent non-nuclear warhead in the history of mankind. In a secret operation, the Americans released a massive ordnance air blast, also known as the mother of all bombs. The explosive fell over a cave system where ISIS members were hiding and released over 11 tons of TNT on the target area, engulfing it in flames and collapsing many of the tunnels below. An ominous smoke cloud could be seen in the sky in what almost felt like a nuclear strike, and the results of the unprecedented blast would take the world by storm. An idea. The basic principle of the Massive Ordnance Air Blast, or MOAB, is strikingly similar to that of the Daisy Cutter, another high-yield bomb used in Vietnam to flatten forest areas and strike fear in the Viet Cong forces. The Daisy Cutter, or Blue 82, was found to be extremely useful in leveling terrain to use as helipads in the thick Vietnamese jungles. Still, it was also used to destroy enemy bases and inflict psychological damage to the North Vietnamese forces. Decades later, in November of 2001, the device was used in Afghanistan against the Taliban. Despite its raw power, conventional carpet bombing would often be more effective at destroying enemy assets. However, the sheer intimidation it brought forth convinced the US military to develop a more powerful version. Pentagon officials were confident that the MOAB would be a formidable tool to deploy as part of their shock and awe strategy during the 2000 invasion of Iraq. The military doctrine, envisioned first in 1996, is a tactic based on the deployment of overwhelming power and spectacular displays of force to completely paralyze the enemy's perception of the battlefield and destroy their will to fight. With that in mind, a new guided large yield bomb was designed to be used particularly against rebel groups and terrorist factions. Making the mother of all bombs. Like its predecessor, the MOAB was designed to explode in the air a few feet before the warhead actually made contact. The idea was that by detonating in the air, the blast would achieve its maximum possible range and deliver a more spectacular explosion. The bombs are designed to be delivered from C-130 cargo aircraft and are carried on special cradles resting on platforms. They are then dropped by deploying parachutes, which effectively extract the cradle and base from the airlifter. Shortly after deployment, the drogues are released, and the bomb falls without the use of a retarding parachute. The main difference between the Daisy Cutter and the MOAB, besides their power, is the guidance system. Once the warhead is falling, a specialized GPS guidance system kicks in to automatically correct the MOAB's course as it falls, ensuring bullseye precision and avoiding collateral damage as much as possible. The MOAB was tested with the explosive Tritonal on March 11, 2003 on Range 70, located in Florida's Eglin Air Force Base. It was tested again on November 21st, and since then, 15 MOABs have been manufactured at the McAllister Army Ammunition Plant in McAllister, Oklahoma. A specific tool. As powerful as the blasts produced by the MOAB look, the weapon is designed for specific warfare scenarios because it is not a penetrator weapon. Instead, its primary function is as an airburst bomb intended for soft to medium surface targets, covering extended areas and targets concealed within enclosed environments such as canyons or cave systems. When it comes to heavily fortified compounds, Penetrator warheads would be far more effective, even if they do not possess a fraction of the explosive power of the MOAB. 
during the Vietnam War's Operation Arclight. The United States Air Force used B-52s in over 10,000 bombing sorties, each typically carried out by two groups of three aircraft. A conventional mission dropped 168 tons of ordnance, equivalent to just about 10 Moab units. Despite the raw numbers, 10 Moab warheads would not have had the same effect on its targets, as the delivery method and range of the blast have very different characteristics. The high-yield explosive is also much more costly than conventional bombs, making it even more important to reserve its use for specific situations where it would be more efficient. The Air Force has stated that each unit has a price of $170,000, but this is an antiquated number from the mid-2000s. Numerous factors in the bomb's atypical development process have made exact cost estimation difficult, but most analysts consider the actual price to be significantly higher. The Moab was a swiftly developed project to use against an adversary with uncertain tactics on unfamiliar terrain. It was an attempt to meet an urgent need rather than a formal weapons program, and if more bombs are developed, manufacturing would likely be much more expensive due to a lack of previously used parts, inflation, and new design and testing. Operational use. However specific the Moab might be, there's no doubt that it delivers a spectacular blast, currently unmatched by any other non-nuclear explosive. As such, the US military has decided that the best possible scenarios to deploy the warhead are those where enemy personnel is under soft or medium armor. The weapon is even more effective when the targets are especially vulnerable to morale damage, as its impressive detonation leaves surviving targets feeling hopeless and overwhelmed. On April 13, 2017, a Moab was dropped for the first time in history, as the US military decided to finally use the mother of all bombs to strike a blow against the elusive ISIS forces, while also sending a powerful message. The target was a cave complex in the Nangahar province in Afghanistan, where ISIS forces had been hiding and orchestrating attacks on the nearby region. The mission was a success, the strike was exact, and the devastation it brought took the world by surprise, as such a powerful conventional bomb had never been used before. Still, controversy ensued, and the need to use such a devastating weapon was questioned. At the same time, the president of Afghanistan accused the US of using their country as testing grounds for potentially unstable devices. The US claimed there had been no damage to innocent citizens, but the local press reported otherwise. Ultimately, the strike was officially deemed a significant victory, with about 100 losses of ISIS operatives and high-level commanders. Amid the controversy, former U.S. military official Mark Garlasco admitted that the U.S. had not used the Moab before because of worries that it would inadvertently reach civilians. To this day, the weapon has not been used again in a combat scenario. Thank you for watching our video. Do you think the Moab's features outweigh its potential collateral damage? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. And for more history-inspired content, don't forget to subscribe to our other Dark Documentaries channels, where we publish exciting stories every day.